Small business war stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. And this is where they tell their stories. I am your host, Pablo Fuentes. Hey, lovers of small business and good stories in general. Welcome to episode 113 of Small Business War Stories. And today I had the chance to sit down with Noel Escobar, and he is the founder of Texas Custom Boots. And he is a craftsman. He's a boot maker. He has really interesting stories. He's been around. He's been doing this for a couple decades now in Austin, Texas, where he has made uh, boots for all kinds of celebrities to come by. And he's been a boot repair person. And he talks a little bit about what it's like to run this kind of business. And uh, one of the things I really love about Noel and his shop is that he has, uh, he, he his shop is a small shop on uh, South First Street in Austin. And it's kind of a, a, a hub and an epicenter for the community. So people come together in a shop and uh, play the guitar and hang out and have some beers and, uh, you know, buy some boots, have their boots fixed or, or just hang out and, uh, that's kind of thing that's kind of getting lost in today's society a lot of times. You get a lot of, uh, you know, people coming in and out, uh, not looking up from their phones. Um, and uh, I'm guilty of it too sometimes, you know, and, and I try to pay attention and, and figure out how I can connect with other people. So he he invites people into his shop and people come together in a way that's really special. Um, and I think all over the country there are people doing this. Um, and, and, and these are the kind of things that I think we should all try to foster, or at least I want to foster in my life. So it's really cool to hear about how he's doing this. He talks about how people like Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin or Ryan Bingham come in and, uh, and uh, into the shop and, and get their boots, but also about how um, he has evolved over time as a craftsman and he brings people together in the community. We'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, you can come to our website at smallbusinesswarstories.com and check out all past episodes. And now, uh, without further ado, let's get into today's episode number 113 with Noel Escobar of Texas Custom Boots in Austin, Texas. And we are live here in beautiful Austin, Texas. And today I have the pleasure and honor to sit down with Noel Escobar. And Noel is a founder and uh, principal of Texas Custom Boots. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's uh, yeah, it's awesome to have you here. Um, I've been a customer of yours for a number of years now, and uh, we originally met because you have an amazing uh, guitar there in the corner, and you know just by playing around. And uh, when when I came to get my boots fixed, uh, we got to talking. But I'd love to uh, talk to you about how you got started in this business. What? How long you've been in business uh, here in Austin, Texas? I've been in business for thirty-two years. Okay, and moved to Austin. Back in 1987. Okay. South Texas boy. Okay. Where, where the, about? Where are you from? The Rio Grande Valley. Okay. Originally, well, McAllen, Texas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I bought into this. Um, actually, I was an employee of this business for about six months until the opportunity was, you know, offered to me to buy it. Um, Texas Custom Boots had started in 1980 and uh, had three previous owners. Uh, I bought it in 87 or 88, really, and um, I still have it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit more. How, what, what sparked your interest in boots? I mean, you were born in Texas, so that probably well, had a lot to do with it. Uh, you know, living in a small town, McAllen, I think, was a small town and wanted to move away to a metropol bigger metropolitan city, just like everybody else was uh, at the age of, I guess I was, yeah, 22 at the time. Um, I grew up in the business. My parents have a thriving business that um, they started in 1967. To this day, are still operating down in McAllen. And um, what's their business? Uh, Escobar's Shoe Repair. Okay, so you, you were born into the world of yeah. shoes and boots. Yes, yes, I was. So you knew already when you came to Austin oh, that yeah. some of you were interested in. Oh, yeah. I, I was very familiar with what 
I was doing when I um, got into the business. And um, I tried some other odd jobs, you know, when I first moved up here. I didn't jump right into the shop or this, this line of work just yet. And um, back then it was, you know, finding classified ads to, to get work. And um, this one turned up and gave it a ring, asked me to come in. Within 20 minutes, they handed me the keys. Please show <laughs> up tomorrow morning. We were, we've been looking for you. And um, it's been, yeah. I've been a part of Texas Custom Boots ever since. That's cool. That's the uh, the old saying that uh, when the student, what's a Buddha saying? When the student's ready, the master will uh, will appear. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. So tell me a little bit more about what this entails. So what percentage? What what do you? So you do a lot of repairs. I do, do you also do builds from scratch? Like what do you usually? What's what's your business? Here? We do build custom made boots from the ground up. So if you're looking for a particular boot that you know no one else has from exotic skins to uh, ornate boots with lots of uh, designs, we can do it. If you have a, a particular, uh, peculiar foot size, wide, narrow, um, you just can't get into boots. Okay, so tell me a little bit more uh, for somebody who doesn't know anything about the process of building a boot. I mean, I. Obviously, I love boots, uh, in, and I have a you know a basic understanding of them. But what is the process of building a boot from the moment somebody walks in? What do you do, and what 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 happens? How long does it take? How, what does it look okay. like? Okay. Well, um, it's like an interview. Talk to the customer, feel it out, see what they're looking for. I'm not going to try and sell something they don't want. Um, I'll discuss time frame price how the procedure is half down as a deposit just like any company cool. and um, once all that's agreed sit them in the chair have their uh, footwear take taken off and then size them up yeah. measurements cool. take precise measurements and um, once so you, build, you build a last for that particular customer yes I do Wow from well I still have some wouldn't last, but the trade has changed to, to plastic last, but um, I still have both, you know, that I work with. And um, if it's a client that's going to order more than one pair, we, we save the last with their name and serial number for a, a later date. But uh, if we see that there hasn't been activity in a while, yeah. you know, I may use that tool or that last for another person. But uh, uh, normally, um, I keep all the measurements on file. Yeah. So they never, they're, they're recorded. That makes sense. If I have to ever make it again. That makes sense. And what, so how much does a pair of boots range? I mean, what's the, I mean, I guess they're, the sky's the limit, right? Depends on the, the kind Oh, it, of it varies, you know, but uh, expect to, uh, drop anywhere from a uh, starting point of 25 to 3,000 okay. for, for, for your basic boot with some stitching and dressed up. Okay. Yeah. And it can go up from there. I oh, yeah. That. Exotics. Yeah. Full exotics to, uh, you know, just a basic calf, but with lots of artwork on it. Yeah. What are some of the craziest boots you've ever built? Like, do you have any good stories about uh, folks, either folks you build boots for or like funky designs and things like that? Well, I mean, over the years, there's been some requests of um, tattoo flash art to um, uh, sceneries or oil derricks and um, sunsets to, you know, state of Texas wrapped around many, many things to the, the American flag. So uh, we've done someone's uh, uh, dog or something that 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 passed on and we did an image of it or something on it yeah wow yeah that's cool so and you have seen also you have all kinds of characters coming through here right because people in uh, austin and people that are visiting austin oh yeah uh so what what are some of the stories some of the people that, that you've seen come through well kind of a little bit of everybody yeah um some have great stories they sit and they 
they like to spend a little time in here. And uh, whether we measure them up or they buy something off the rack, because I'm a big, you know, vintage boot deal, dealer here, uh, or restore their, their boots that they've held on for many, many years. Yeah. And uh, when they, they got a liking to how, how we uh, took care of their, their work, yeah. um, it changes their whole aspect of, of how we do things. Yeah. Um, so I saw, I saw Ryan Bingham was here not too long ago, right? Like Ryan the, Bingham, the yes, he comes. He pretty, he comes in, uh, I'd say maybe one, twice a year or so. Yeah. Pops in to buy inventory or get something, you know. Any, done anybody up there. else? Anybody? Any other interesting cats that uh, come by? A few months back, well, Robert Plant. Okay. I mean, he's he's a he's a he's a regular. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Robert Plant. That he strikes me as a guy that would have really flashy boots. Uh, he's got a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I know his taste. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. Yeah. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about what it means to make things by hand here, right? Because um, so most most of the boots sold in the U.S. are actually made in Mexico, right? And and Leon probably. Oh yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, and uh, that's considered production. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of the sign of the times. Uh, the labor's cheap out there, so it's the it's built quickly. Um, quality. There's still some quality out there, but um, nowadays people just want a good pair of boots or just boots on their feet. Um, on the, I can't say like on the East Coast, West Coast, you know, where it's all, I think it is all popular everywhere, but here in Texas, um, I'll never go out of business. Yeah. Right, because people are still going to need uh, or want you mm-hmm. know, specific builds mm-hmm. and, and custom boots, right? Yeah, and, and there's... Um, there are boots out there for the conservative person to the got to look at me kind of guy or, or, or lady. Uh, there's boots with bling and um, there's your exotics. There's there's just plain calf and there's bright colors. It's they're all flavors out there. Yeah. 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 So t- tell me a little bit more about what it's like to to to, to be a craftsperson in the 21st century. Right. Because you're. Um, you are competing in some ways, I guess, with people uh, in like a factory, a boot factory. But at the same time, you're not competing with a boot factory, right? Because you're offering a different product. Do you um, do you feel? Tell me a little bit more about the relationship that you develop with your customers, and how is that important for you to continue to have? Because you you're here in an amazing location on on, on South First, right? And you yeah. have uh, you have some beautiful boots here. There's all kinds of boots from the last probably four or five decades up up in the walls here, as well as your your uh, custom shop next door. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, what are the kinds of relationships? What, how is it, what is it like being a craftsman in the 21st century? Um, you know, not too many of us out there. And, um, I like answering all the questions that the customers bring to me. It's challenging. Well, now they're so easy. It's a piece of cake. Some of them like to pick my brain and they think they can get up on me, but, uh, (laughs) <laughs> they better so, be ready. Tell me because I can. I, they, they can't. Yeah, you know, they can't fool me. What What do you? What are some of the stories that come to mind when people try to fool you? Well, you know, I can tell someone that has a, an eye for quality, and I can tell someone that the pair of boots he's got on his feet is just he didn't know what he was buying. And then uh, I see people that have had work done elsewhere, and well, I'm gonna give them my two cents about it and I might be always right on it um, but then I've had someone think what they had all these years on their feet was what it was and it's not mm-hmm. and I had to make the correction yeah well you educated you know? me quite a bit I mm-hmm. mean about like the construction of boots mm-hmm. and like you know the, the even this morning uh, you know you were telling me about the, the boots used to be built with like different types of leather and construction and now there's I guess materials have changed, and not all new boots are built and, and with the yeah. best materials. And, and they change because um, the manufacturers are looking to save money to profit off the consumer, and it's just once again sign of the times. What what how footwear is being made nowadays? A lot of uh, uh let's just go not just boots, but like a uh, shoe industry. There are shoes built at to a standards that you have to throw them away when they're done right they're, they're not they're 
They're non-repairable. Mm -hmm. They're designed that when you're done with it, it's to be thrown away. Yeah. And they're designed so that the cobbler, the, the shoe repair industry, can't repair it. Why? Because they want you to buy more shoes. That's right. the manufacturer right. wants you to buy more shoes. Right. So it takes somebody who's going to be your customer is going to be somebody who appreciates quality and who is willing to resole shoes and repair shoes, right? Mm -hmm. Even yeah. the boots I'm currently wearing, you have probably helped me keep this going. I don't know, like many, 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 many times I bring them over and you help I know. me, you help, <laughs> you help me uh, keep them going. And I show you how to keep them going. Yeah. 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 yeah no, you do. Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. that's, I mean, that's why I keep coming back. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. That's I appreciate awesome. that. How do you find most of your customers? I, I presume there's going to be a lot of word of mouth, right? I can't hide. You can't hide? <laughs> I can't. No. Um, I don't do much advertising. I yeah. mean, yeah, I do. I have a Facebook and um, Instagram and, and what Google page and, and so forth. But um, word of mouth, just what you said, word, word of mouth, the, the stores around here, the clientele that have used me over the years, um, spread the word and they religiously do it um yeah. there's uh, i don't know the fan base or what do you call it yeah. but uh, i hate i have people that say you don't know how many many people i've talked you up on yeah. but uh, i get it yeah. um if i was doing a bad work i think i wouldn't be where i am today but yeah like i said it's 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 been a you know a journey of uh 31 32 years something like that Right. 1987. Yeah. Yeah. I was a youngin. And uh, so if you're, the, maybe we have a, you know, a, an audience of a lot of people who are uh, small business people who are, you know, maybe crafts, crafts people themselves. Mm -hmm. You, what I'm hearing is that the best advertisement is basically doing great work for your customers and then having them help you spread the word. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this. Um, have you ever thought, so one of the things that comes up a lot with guests is like this temptation to, uh, this, I guess, struggle and push and pull and temptation to grow. So let's say that, have you ever thought about opening another store and what that would mean and or would that push you beyond your comfort zone with what you want to do here in terms of putting out amazing products and keeping your clients happy? Um, so how, how do you see that, that, that trade-off? Oh, well, you know, um, comfort zone. I see what you're saying. I have a comfort zone. Uh, expansion, yeah. There's a way of doing it. I have it in the back of my, okay. my mind. So it's something you always. have to consider. Oh, gosh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I've got ideas and plans, just like you know some of these companies have done, but have I took that leap? Right. Not just yet. Right. But I'm still young. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, that's a, because obviously you have something that really works here, right? Uh -huh. But to expand and go beyond, you would, it would be a risky proposition because you have to all of a sudden mm -hmm. maybe manage that growth and you wouldn't be able to spend as much time actually building the boots. And that's kind of like a lot of the tension that happens. Yeah. So what, how, how do you see that? Is, that? is that something that that worries you? And like, where do you see this 10 years from now? Well, it doesn't worry me right now, but uh, when I take that leap, then... I'll I'll expect what what will happen, but ten years from now, kind of hard to say where I'll be ten years from now. But uh, I think I'll just be building better boots. Nice. If I like they're good it. now, they'll just be better. It's gonna be even better. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That reminds me. Uh, I think Casals is a, uh, <coughs> a Spanish cellist that he was like ninety years old and he huh? was. Uh, he still practiced every day. So uh -huh. I asked him, like, what do you practice? And, you know, why? You, you know, you're such an accomplished cellist. Why do you practice every day? And mm -hmm. his answer was, because I feel like I'm still getting better. Yeah. You know, back, let's say, reverse it 10 years from, 15 years, actually. I had a, uh, the master, uh, Albert, uh, a.k.a. Gordo Lozano. He was my teacher. He passed away due to, you know, health issues, diabetes, uh, took his life. And um, one thing he mentioned to me was uh, don't ever change it. The way you do, the, the format of how, how we build them, the tracings, the patterns. Don't go new age. Uh, and there's all these, you know, laser cutters and stuff that do computer uh 
uh, embroidery machines and do all that. That's what we're, we're talking about is production line. That's how it's all done now. Um, but those are factory stock sizes and so forth. Keep it the same. Mm-hmm. So that's why we keep it the same. That brings up an interesting question for me, which is you had a mentor and somebody that uh, taught you, right? Who taught you? Um, how do you think about passing on your art? Do you have, uh, do you have an apprentice here? Have you ever thought about taking on an apprentice? How do you think about passing on the trade to, to future generations? Well, I've had people work for me and uh, pick up stuff and move on to something else and, and so forth. Picking up little this, little that. But yes, I'm, I'm all right with that. It's a nerdy thing. It, sh- it should be passed on. Okay. Mm-hmm. But there's no... There's no Noel Well, I don't have a, wings. I don't, there's I don't no, have a no Noel Jr. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. Okay. What if, what if they were to show up? I mean, how do you, and how do you think about that? Because a lot of people uh, who are craftspeople whom I've interviewed for the show, uh, sometimes find it challenging to find people to, who are interested in doing that kind of manual work and passing on these traditions. How do you, uh, is that something you think about? Well, I give them advice on so forth, but, um, you know, there's schools out there that, that, there's not many that or or places that will teach you a course on the basic stuff uh me don't really have the time i'm busy with this and working two three departments in this in this business so uh there again in a sense i have a comfort zone going Mm -hmm. back to the comfort zone thing yeah and expansion in 10 years i would like to see it yes definitely and uh i may take that that step what would that look like? If, what would that look like when you daydream about it? What, where do you see this going in terms of expansion? Well, a room double the size, maybe three times with with <gasps> shelves full of stuff, and I'd love to make a um, a uh, stock boot, you know, a production line, but of the quality that I want that passes my my uh, inspection. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's many boots out there, they're trying the same thing, and uh, some have succeeded, some are just, you know, eh. But uh, it's 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 a monopoly. Mm. There's a there's many of them. Uh, there's so many flavors. Um, pick a choose. Okay. All right. Can you think of a time when things went really wrong with your business, and what did you do about it? Hmm. Like when in a time when you're like, oh shit. I think the early stages yeah. were 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 in the tw- in in the nineties. Um, were about the the downfall of it, but it wasn't so bad. You made corrections, or you just recorded those months. You know, is there a specific instance where like a, a like a customer project went wrong, or something happened? And, and if if a project went went wrong. Regardless, it went wrong. It was uh, corrected. Yeah. I stood behind it. It's just not like I threw it to the side and no, said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Yeah. No one that I can remember yeah. uh, walked out like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, but can you think of, I mean, a lot of times when people, you know, you can share the story about how something went wrong and how you fixed it, right? That, that's just something that's been a theme in the, in the podcast in general is, people talking about the you know the specific things that went sideways and how they how they how they address it hmm good question like it could be in a in a project or just a anything. just a repair yeah, anything or or your business or i mean well the, the one universal thread that i find with people who start their companies is that the path is just never easy mm-hmm. there are all kinds of challenges and a lot of people find a lot of um I guess there's a, a comfort and inspiration in hearing the stories of other people and the struggles that they've addressed and how they've gotten over. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, repairs over the years. Yeah. Not every one of them has been perfect. I, I recall one coming in. Man was in finance, brought mm-hmm. a quality boot. We discussed what we were going to do. The treads soles heels i like this lip yeah when he got it back w- one note to detail the the stitching wasn't um white like he wanted we did dark 
and the uh, lip of the um, bases were were a little closer in, and um, he wasn't. He mentioned it, and then I looked at it and said, "Okay, sir, you want you spent this much? Um, let me take care of it." Mm-hmm. So I dismantled the whole boot. Wow! Redid it. Yeah. And called him up in two, three days, and said, "Here you go." Yeah. And got it the way it was, at 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 my expense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I took care of it. Yeah, you have to take yeah. care of it. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, it reminds me of a story. Uh, this photographer Dan Mitchell in Columbus, Ohio, right? He he, he lost all the files. His hard drive got corrupted, and he lost the files for uh, for all these folks. And he talks about uh, in in his podcast about how you know he had to basically call the customers and tell them. And like they, you know, things go wrong for for everybody. It's just like how I think that what what makes a difference is what you do about it, and and do you strive to make it right? You know, and like, do you make sure that the customer's happy at the end of the day? Oh yes, I do. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. What are, what are some of the craziest things? You, you, so you had an event here for South by Southwest, right? The, mm-hmm. uh, you had some music. What are some of the cool things that you do around the shop here? Uh, you, I mean, what I really love about your shop is how it's more than just boots, right? So I come here. I'm a regular customer here. Uh, you help me keep my boots running and, and some of the ones that I haven't worn in a while. You also help me bring them back to life. Um, but you're also a place for community, right? So I was here... Uh, with my girlfriend last uh, last week, and we were, um, you know, hanging out here, playing the guitar, having some beers, and it's a place where people assemble. How do you see your role as, as, as somebody who's a part of the community, and what are the kinds of things that you try to do to, to do more of that? Hmm. Actually, just trying to be a guest, but at the same time, trying to get some work done. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, this showroom here is, uh, it's got a comfortable vibe. Yeah. Um, the way we decorated it. Uh, I've had couples come in and ask if they can take their wedding pictures here. Uh, I've had uh, folks uh, do photo shoots, um, rent the house, you know, um, for just a little bit of time. We had a real estate uh, company do a little party here. We had um, Red Bull do a little something here. Nice. Uh, Duty and Burke did a photo shoot here okay. <laughs> for their handbags okay. uh, why us i don't know but okay uh ford uh did a did a uh, commercial for one of their vehicles a few years back uh, in our parking lot and uh, sure i'll take it <laughs> cool <laughs> any little bit helps yeah what did you do for the south by southwest so you had some folks playing music here uh, uh basically um I had um, a couple of different musicians come in and, and spend about three or so, four hours maybe of, of playtime and uh, we had a barbecue and fed everybody on the house. Just wanted to get the anybody walking by or yeah. clients or, or what have you just come on in. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And do you have any other events planned for the rest of the year? What are the other things? Or is it mostly like improvised things that you do? Yeah, it's just spur of the moment kind of thing. Yeah. Awesome. And I feel like that's something that's getting lost in our culture, right? Like having like meeting places where people come together. Uh, a lot of times people are you know, spending a lot of time on their phones or, or in, the, in front of their TVs. And like that, that human interaction of, of being around other people and having those places where you can do that. That's something that's uh, kind of a dying art or a dying place, and it's it's really cool to see you be one of those places, right? This yes, yeah, yeah. that's Love awesome. It. It's got to feel good. Yeah, that's awesome. Where can people find you? So, if people are interested in getting, uh, do you, by the way, do people have to show up here in order to get builds uh, for a build yeah. for for uh, custom? Yeah, yes. Okay, I just don't. You don't do somebody send me measurements. I, I don't work that way. Okay, yeah. Uh, Restoration, you can ship it from any part of the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've had them ship them as far as, you know, Australia. Wow. Yeah, Hong Kong. Uh, just if, if, yeah, if there's boots out there, yes, because uh, send it my way. Yeah, send them your way. Yeah. Okay, and where, so where can people find you? So you, uh, uh, you have your Instagram, right, which is Texas Custom Boots. Mm-hmm. And Facebook as well, uh, uh, the, the web, you know, TexasCustomBoots.com. Uh, TexasCustomBoots.com. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so anybody, and then if you're in Austin, Texas, you can buy, you can come here and buy and have 
boots fitted particularly to your foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, here in beautiful South Austin. Yeah. And you, you can even ask any of the uh, boot vendors or, or uh, you know Western stores how to find me. They'll, they'll they know me. Yeah. They, they use you can come us. here and sit on <laughs> the uh, vintage red leather couch. Yeah. And uh, with uh, a wall of amazing, amazing vintage pieces here. And, uh, you know, play the guitar and drink some beers and get some boots built. Exactly. Sounds good. Well, Noel Escobar, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate being thank a guest you, of sir. Small Business War Stories. <laughs> thank you. Thank All you. right. Bye now. Small Business War Stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. And this is where they tell their stories. I am your host, Pablo Fuentes.